There are quite a few questions that arise when connecting multiple batteries together. There are two methods for connecting batteries, series connection and parallel connection. Depending on the choice, the effects on voltage, capacity and compatibility with equipment will be very different. Since some of these concepts can remain unclear or be incorrectly applied, I suggest we explore how to connect batteries together without making connection mistakes through real life examples, whether using lead acid or lithium technology. But before we begin, as usual, you will find our electrical diagram pack in the description. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a like and feel free to ask your questions in the comments. Let's start with a quick reminder of the basics. When batteries are connected in series, the voltage adds up while the capacity in ampere hours remains the same. For example, two batteries of 12 volts and 200 ampere hours connected in series form a block of 24 volts and 200 ampere hours. This setup is useful when working with higher voltages, such as 24 volts in converted vehicles like camper vans or RVs. It allows the reduction of current flowing through the cables because the higher the voltage, the lower the current for the same power which makes it possible to use thinner cables and reduce losses due to the joule effect. Conversely, a parallel connection keeps the voltage constant but adds the capacities. For example, two batteries of 12 volts and 200 ampere hours in parallel will give a battery of 12 volts and 400 ampere hours. This increases the system's autonomy, meaning the number of hours during which devices can be powered without sunlight. This type of setup is particularly useful if you want to stay at 12 volts but with enough capacity to power a strong inverter for example. Finally, it is possible to combine both methods with a series parallel configuration, which increases both voltage and capacity. For instance, using four batteries of 12 volts and 200 ampere hours, you can create a system of 24 volts and 400 ampere hours by making two series of two batteries in parallel. It is important to note some safety and compatibility rules before making any connections. All the batteries in the same group must have the same nominal voltage, the same capacity and the same chemistry, such as lead acid or lithium. For example, a lead acid battery must not be connected with a lithium battery. Ideally, they should also be of the same age, especially when using lead acid technology. Before connecting them, the batteries must be charged to the same level to avoid current transfers. In a parallel connection, the cables linking each battery must be of equal length, otherwise some batteries will be more heavily used than others. This reminder of the fundamentals lays the necessary groundwork to understand the configuration choices we are going to explore through practical case studies. Let's take a first case study with a 1000 watt inverter running on 12 volts, connected to a 12 volt 200 ampere hour battery and in the second case study we will connect them in series. You will see it is very interesting. So let's start with the lead acid AGM or GEL battery to clearly understand the difference compared to lithium. This type of battery has a recommended discharge rate of 0.2 C which means 20% of its nominal capacity per hour. I will make a dedicated video about the C rate soon. So the calculation is simple. 0.2 C multiplied by 200 ampere hours equals 40 amperes. However, a 1000 watt inverter running on 12 volts requires approximately 1000 watts divided by 12 volts, which equals around 83 amperes. The battery will therefore be pushed to more than twice its recommended discharge capacity. This can cause internal overheating, reduced lifespan, especially a drop in performance, and eventually a significant loss of capacity. Now, it does work in the short term. That's for sure, but this configuration is not recommended with a single lead acid battery, unless you use your inverter for very short periods, in that case, maybe. But if we add a second battery in parallel to the first one, the total capacity will increase to 400 ampere hours. So the recommended current becomes 0.2 multiplied by 400 ampere hours equals 80 amperes. Since the inverter draws 83 amperes, the system becomes almost balanced, and in this case, we can say that the batteries will be preserved. This allows for more sustainable use, but at the cost of significant weight and volume and a high long-term cost. And even if we respect the low recommended charge and discharge currents for a lead acid battery, we must not forget that the depth of discharge DOD, also plays a crucial role in lifespan. In fact, the more the discharge is limited, the greater the number of cycles. For example, a battery used with a discharge limited to 20% meaning only 20% of its capacity is consumed in each cycle, can offer up to twice as many cycles as a battery regularly discharged to 50%. The best compromise between usable capacity and longevity is often found around 80% of charge retained, which means moderate use of 20% per cycle. Yes, 
we are very far from lithium. And precisely with the lithium battery, it is perfectly possible to use a single battery. A lithium battery with a capacity of 200 ampere hours easily supports 83 amperes of discharge current with a battery management system rated at 200 amperes. Now, if we take a single lithium battery of 100 ampere hours, 83 amperes for a battery management system of 100 amperes is acceptable. But if we want to preserve the battery over time, two batteries of 100 ampere hours in parallel would be a better option. Or, as mentioned above, a 200 ampere hour LFP battery with a 200 ampere battery management system, which is even simpler. So now, if we go back to this first case study, but with a 1000 watt inverter running on 24 volts. 1000 watts divided by 24 volts equals 41.6 amperes. If we take the same example of two lead acid batteries connected in series, we get a 24 volt battery with a capacity of 200 ampere hours. The recommended discharge current for lead acid, 200 ampere hours multiplied by 0.2 equals 40 amperes. In reality, it's the same. You could say it amounts to the same thing since you still need to buy two lead acid batteries in this example. So let's summarize the advantages of the series connection and the fact of switching from 12 volts to 24 volts. First, the current is divided by two for the same power, which means reduced heating and therefore better efficiency. Fewer constraints on wiring, smaller cable diameter and lower costs, a more affordable charge controller, and less overall thermal stress on the entire system. But be careful, the batteries must be strictly identical and balanced before connecting them in series. And you must ensure that all components, inverter, controller, protections, are compatible with 24 volts. Here, I wanted to go over the basics of connecting batteries in series in parallel, and also remind you that lead acid batteries are very limiting and are no longer really suitable for converted vehicles or for solar storage in general. And in any case, do not hesitate to oversize your battery bank, even with lithium. The less current you draw, the more you preserve the lifespan of your batteries.